This video is to introduce new guys to our timesheet and the importance of our timesheet and to remind existing employees of things they get a little lazy at and uh, get you back on the right track. So what we have right here is our timesheet. I need everybody to understand the importance of this one piece of paper. This one piece of paper is used by every single person in this office. It is not just used to pay you. It is used to keep up with your truck mileages and the services. It is used to keep up with your drill services. It is used to keep up with hammer and bit usage and footages and service on that. It is used to make sure you're doing your safety protocol on your pre-shift evaluation. It is used to do production reports that we send to Chris and to Red and to Bob. It is used for everything. We use it to audit your shots. Uh, so we need good accurate information on this paperwork and I'm going to walk you step by step through what you're supposed to do and if you didn't know about some things or have forgotten, we're going to remind you. So, the first thing on your timesheet, right here, says daily timesheet. Do you ever, when you were in high school or elementary school or something, turn in a piece of paper and make a hundred on it but got points taken off because you didn't put your name on it? Well, same thing now. Right here, first thing you need to do every day is put your name. We need your name. It comes in. We print off all kinds of things at one time, and it can get lost. So make sure your name's on there. Second thing, date. Today is 3-26-20, so I'm going to make sure that date is in there. Location, wherever you're at, I need to know the quarry name, if you know it, the customer name of the location you're at. Why do we need the customer name too? Because we do have some places that there are two different customers in the same town or both use the same name. So. For example, Midkiff. We have CSA Midkiff and Jones Brothers Midkiff. If you only put Midkiff, then we have to search down. You need to know where you're at so you can tell us. So I need you very specifically to put where you're at. Um, for my purposes, I'm going to use Hanson Burnett. we're going to make sure we know exactly where we're at. Now, once you get that done, the first thing you're going to do, because it is called a pre-shift evaluation, is the MSHA side of your timesheet. So, pre-shift evaluation time. Uh, depending on when you get, it, get into the quarry is when you, and start, that's when you need to put it. So, if it is 7.02 a.m., we are going to put 7.02 a.m. on your timesheet. Location, yes, I know it's right over here. Write it again. Hanson, burn it. Machine number. Let's take for instance, you're on the DCR 20, 2102. You would make sure you put 2102. Examined truck number. Every truck has a number. If you don't know what your truck number is, you need to make sure you find out. You can call and talk to Lita and she will let you know. We're going to take truck 111. That's my truck number. So I'm going to put my truck number. Uh, machine hours. So whatever you start at, you need to make sure you put um, 4,120.3. If that's what it is, you make sure you write it down. And I will note that this and over here when you get to your normal side should most likely be the same. 
All right, examine of, examination of work area. Every one of you have been through multiple trainings, whether it's a new minor training, annual training, and we have gone over pre-shift evaluations and your examination of work area. This section may not ever be empty. You must always, always put something in this so that the MSHA inspectors they come and ask you for your pre-shift evaluation can verify that you have um, looked at your uh, work area before you start. You can put no hazards found or you can write down whatever hazards you may see. It could be a crack. It could be maybe when you looked up from the floor to the face that you noticed a uh, cave that had wallowed out you need to write it here. So, I'm either going to put no hazards found or I'm going to write what hazard it was. Um, crack six feet from face. Now, if you do write down that there is a hazard you're going to need to, in the comments, write down what you did to correct that. Now, if it's a crack, you can write down here that you stayed six feet from it, just like you would the face, which is MSHA regulation. You stayed six feet from the face. You can say you moved back. You can say notified quarry of potential slip or something, but you're going to need to write down what it is that you did to try and correct this. If it was something on your machine, you'd write it down and what you did to correct it. Broken ladder, threw ladder away, got a new one. But make sure you write that down at the bottom. <clears throat> Exam and then you're going to go through your examination of the machine. On each one of these, fire extinguishers, emergency stop, backup alarm, windows, you need to write if there's an issue with them. Fire extinguisher, maybe it's okay. You can write down okay. If it's getting close to uh, time to switch it out, you might write down. Need to switch out this weekend. You know, so we can get a, a fire extinguisher ready for you. But you need to go through every one of these and write what's wrong with it. If you have a crack in the window, crack inside window, emergency stop is okay, backup alarm, okay. But every one of these needs to be identified that you have checked it. Um, need new one, need new wipers. Lights are okay. Seat belt, okay. Guards, okay. Horn, okay. Mirrors, okay. Clean cab, yes. Cleaned it. Cleaned under air carriage, yes. Brakes, working. Now, brakes. That means you need to set your brake. You need to set your emergency brake and or emergency parking brake on an angle and make sure it's working. That needs to be done on a regular basis because you will get a fine if an entry inspector makes you put your truck on a grade and put the parking brake on and put it in neutral. If it does not work, we need to know, so you need to be checking it. Leaks, if there's any leaks or cracks, indicate it. No leaks. No cracks. Checking your lubricants. It's not just a matter of checking Okay, okay, okay. Not just a matter of that. 
you need to write down if you have to add it. Your engine oil is okay, but I added one gallon. Now, it is important that if you put that you added something, you must put and let us know that you added a gallon or a quart because you, if you only put a number, we don't know what you did. We're, again, we're watching this for any kind of maintenance issues. If we see that you added 45 gallons or 45 of compressor oil, I need to know if that's quarts or gallons because that's going to make a big difference as to whether or not you have an issue with your drill or how bad of an issue. But quarts or gallons. Okay, okay, okay. If you clean your filters, which you should every day, mark that you cleaned them. Now, I want you to notice something. Every spot on here has some kind of an answer. If there is a spot, you need to answer it. It does not need to be left blank. Now, down here on the comments, again, if you found a hazard, down here you need to write what you did to correct it. So I have right here, crack six feet from face. So down here on the bottom, I'm going to write stayed six feet from the crack. So you need to make sure you write down what you did to correct again if you find, find a hazard. Now, once you finish this, you go back to this part. This is the part where that we use on a daily basis in this office. This tells us your time, your footage, your meter hours, your uh, what you did for the day, tramming, truck odometer. Every one of those has to be filled up, especially if you are a driller. There is never any reason for any of this to not be filled out. Um, so let's start up from the top again. Drill ID. Well, we are on drill 2102. So we are filling that out again. After you put in your drill ID, there are a few things that you can start uh, filling in on your timesheet uh, with beginning of the day stuff. Now, one of them will be your beginning hour meter, which like we indicated over here is 4120.3. The other thing that you can go ahead and fill out at the beginning of the day is your start time. So if you did your pre-shift at 7.02, maybe you got to the quarry or started driving to the quarry, whichever the case may be, at 6.30. So, Start time, 6.30 a.m. You also should, at the be beginning of the day, indicate your odometer reading for your trucks. So, again, I'm in truck 111. My starting odometer was 103,570. Okay. Those are things you can do at the beginning of the day. The rest of this, you kind of fill out at the end of the day. Now you can use your timesheet as a scratch pad and kind of keep notes on it. You could use the back of it to keep your notes and then kind of write out your information uh, at the end of the day once you sit down and look at everything. Uh, we do have the app and we'll go over that in another video to turn in this stuff. We don't turn in a handwritten one. But I am highly encouraging you all to do a handwritten one, number one, for your MSHA side. Because if something happens to your phone and the app glitches, you do not have this to show the MSHA inspectors. And then just to basically kind of keep your notes on. Now, we're going to talk about footages. Footages are probably the most complicated part of your timesheet and one of the most important 
because again on your footages we use that information to audit your shots to make sure we bill correctly we use those footages to give Chris what your production is and Bob and Red we use those footages to keep up with the usage on our hammers and bits uh, so it's it's something that you need to be extra vigilant in keeping accurate information on so what we expect what do we expect on your footages um, let's say you drilled 450 feet today all right now maybe that's 10 holes at 45 feet 10 holes 45 feet deep and that's great if that's all you drilled is one depth but most of you do not drill just one depth so one depth number of holes number of feet 450 I and I did that all on hammer A B C but let's say you drilled 30 holes and they're multiple depths. Okay? You can do that whichever way you can keep up with and can get me that information to where I can understand it. Some guys like to put 30 holes 10 to 15 feet deep. Okay, we're going to do, put this in parentheses since this is another, this is an example. But what I need when they do that is to come down here in the comments and tell me that I drilled 10 holes at 15 feet deep, 10 holes at 12 feet deep, 5 holes at 11 feet, 5 holes at 10 feet deep. So if you drill multiple depths, I need somewhere clearly what you drilled. And then you need to do your math, make sure it's right, to put here. So this is 150 feet. This is 120, this is 55, this is 50. So that should add up to 5, 7, 375 feet. But you need to make sure we know what that is. Now, not only do you need to let us know exactly what you drilled, but I need to know what shot that is. So, on shot number one, two, three, four, five. Everybody, when they start drilling a shot, should get that shot number, and it needs to be indicated in your comments. If you change shots, you finish shot one, two, three, four, five, and you go to shot one, two, three, four, five, six, or one, two, three, four, six, we're going to indicate finished shot. Started shot number one two three four six and then if you drilled on that you're gonna let me know that I drilled three at 60 feet 10 at 75 feet and then you're gonna have another um, set of numbers up here Maybe this is 13 on the new shot, 60 to 75, and this total is 750, 180, 930 feet. But when I go to check the math, 
I need to know the numbers down here so I can make sure your math worked. Now, why is that important? Number one, I know that uh, you're turning in your correct footages. I know when I pull in every timesheet on a shot that those numbers should match up. I should be able to see that there were three and ten and what on all for the next day and they all add up at the end. Um, other things that you can put down here if you change hammers. I changed hammer to hammer EFG then maybe finish shot with hammer ABC started shot and used EFG. So not only do I need you to distinguish between shots, I need you to distinguish your footage between hammers. The rest of your comments, and you have comments down at the bottom as well, is for you to tell me what you did during the day. Maybe you had to go buy a hose because you had a hydraulic break. Maybe you got inspected by MSHA. Maybe you had to pull off for a blast. And that's going to be somewhere in one of the comments. Pulled off for blast. Broke a hose. Went to town. But you're going to tell me that. Um, tramming. So right up here we indicated that we worked on two different um, shots during the day. Well then at some point you're going to have moved. So if you have to tram, that's in this area right here. This may be the only thing that could be blank because sometimes you may not move. So if you have to tram, leaving shot number one, two, three, four, five. I want to know what your hour meter is when you start tramming. So it was at four, one, two, five point oh. When I got to my next shot, it was at four, one, two, five point three. I don't care how short of a time period it is. I want to see that tram. And I arrived at one, two, three, four, six. Maybe you pulled off for a blast after that. Leaving one, two, three, four, six at four, one, two, six point seven. And four, one, two, six point nine. You went to a safe place for blast. You can put that. But then we should see safe place four one two six point nine back to your shot four one two seven point two one two three four six. So if you have to spend time tramming around, I want to see every bit of it. If you have to go back and do a clean out, now this is an important thing. If you have to do a clean out, your tram time starts when you leave that shot. 4128.0 4, until you get back to that shot. You might put clean out or something. So I come back at 4130. Uh, one, two, three, four, six, and clean out. And my shot number is one, two, three, four, seven, CO for clean out. Let me know what you had done. From there. 
Maybe you're at the end of the day. So you've got, went back to that. Maybe that's your end of your day. So my ending hour is 4130.0. Total your meter hours. This is 9.7 hours. What time did you end? I ended at 5 o'clock p.m. Did I take a lunch? If you did, write down how much. Maybe it was half an hour. Maybe it was an hour. Maybe it was no lunch. If you took no lunch, write no. Number of hours, this is 10 and a half out, no. Yeah, 10 and a half hours, half hour lunch, so that's 10 hours. Night out. Night out is how you get your per diem. If you don't put that you had a night out, we're not necessarily going to catch that you, you were or were not. So, night out, yes or no. If you put yes in your comments, I'm going to get told uh, that you stayed at the Best Western and burn it. So we want to know where it is that you stayed. Everybody bunks up. So if you are staying with someone, you need to write it down. Or write, stayed alone. Stayed with Joe Blow. Stayed with the mechanic. But that needs to be in this information. And if you notice, the only thing I've left, I've got end of the day, I've got 103590 maybe. Put in your ending odometer for the day. Again, everything is filled out. Everything is very detailed about what you did for the day. If we have a question, you could pull this out and look at it and help us figure it out. Now, like I said earlier, I highly encourage all of you to do this by hand for multiple reasons. Number one, like I said, if something, something happened to your phone and you were trying to do it all on your app and you dropped your phone and it got run over during the day or it fell down a hole or there was a glitch and you lost this part, then you're going to have it in hard copy form to show an MSHA inspector. Or to show one of our guys who come because they're going to do the same thing that an MSHA inspector does and ask you, have you done your pre-shift evaluation? So you have that in hard form. Uh, number two, like I said, you can keep this so that if we have a question we can call you and you can easily get to it. My suggestion is every one of you will keep a copy of your shot report. I would put all of your timesheets that go with each shot report together. That way when we have a question about that, you can pull all of that out together and look at it because that's how we're going to look at it. Also, you can take, you, let's say you do finish the shot and you're auditing yourself. You have all of your timesheets to look back and make sure that I say over the course of the day, I mean the three days I was drilling on this shot, that I drilled 50 holes. Well, you can look back and see if those three days add up to what you're fixing to turn in. Just yesterday, I had a guy call me and said, hey, I was auditing my shot. I realized I had turned in on my daily timesheets seven holes more than I needed to have, so I need to correct that. The good thing about that is we can go back and we can correct his production. We can go in and correct his um, footages on his hammers and bits. And he's doing that and we're not having to find that. Y'all have one person to deal with, one set of paperwork. We've got 40. So if y'all can find it before it gets to us, that's a good deal you get a little gold star for the day. So, that's how you fill out a timesheet. If you have any questions, if you don't understand some certain part of this, please give me a call. Text me a, a message 
and we will figure this out, whatever it is you do not understand. So, 